over, fallen over in the desert. It's made out of pink granite. It's perfectly polished with copper tools. <laughs> and uh, this is a person beside it. The statue itself, uh, want, when they found it, they said, oh, let's just move it over there because we're going to build the we're going to build the the uh, the Ramses Museum. So the engineers came and they said, well, okay, but then we'll have to cut it in pieces. Because this thing is approximately a thousand ton solid block of granite. A thousand ton. That is five times more than what we can lift today with a land crate. So instead they built a museum around it. <laughs> this is not the only thousand ton block that was found. At, you know the pillars on each side of the entrance of, of temples in Egypt, they are called obelisks. Many of them were in excess of a thousand ton. And they all come out, all these large objects, come out of a quarry that we know where it is. It's hundreds of miles up the Nile. And the quarry is on the other side of the Nile over a mountain range. Okay? When you ask archaeologists, how this, did this get there? They say, oh, oh they, they cut the trench from the Nile across the mountain range into the quarry and then they let the water in and then they picked up the object they stuck it on a barge and they floated it down the Nile but there's no evidence of that trench ever being cut how do you lift up a thousand ton object and put it on a barge without sinking it. I mean, that is just not appropriate. It just doesn't happen. So when you look at this, you start to wonder, who were these sun gods? And were they able to go all around the world? Under the water in China, in Japan, recently, pyramids were found. These pyramids are at 19.47 latitude. Uh, they're enormous pyramids. All the fishermen knew that they were there, but they didn't think it was important, so they didn't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, this, and, and, and here is uh, another picture of these slabs. They're huge. They're huge blocks. What's really interesting about those is that, you see, you can't date a pyramid. You can't date a monument. Because carbon dated, dating only carbon dates. <laughs> you need carbon. Rock doesn't have much carbon in it. Not enough to date it. It has silica, and it has, um, you know, it has spirit, you know, a, a certain rate of decay and all this. You can date how old is the rock, but that won't tell you when it was caught and assembled into a pyramid. Okay? So actually, archaeologists don't date the monuments. They just find the bones of this poor fellow beside it, or they find a fireplace beside it or something, and then they carbon date that. And they say, oh, it's this dude that built this thing. <laughs> you see? But when the pyramid goes under the water, 
Oh, now a coral growth starts to happen shortly after. And that's carbon datable. So now you can tell at least when the pyramid went under the water. Well, when they carbon dated these pyramids, they went under the water at least 10,000 years ago. The meltdown of the last ice age. When the water rose and covered the earth. There is over a hundred, uh, there's over 500 flood stories in ancient civilization all around the world. Talking about an advanced civilization that was there prior the sun god and the flooding that occurred that destroyed morals of that civilization. Here we might be seeing some of the vestiges of that civilization. Go ahead. Well, Edgar Casey came up with Uh, by finding a wall or a road and we did and, and he, he said it was going to be in the early 70s and in 1973 I believe divers off the coast of Bimini found a huge rocks under the water making a road and um, Edgar Casey said we were going to find a chamber under the paws of the Sphinx and uh, recently using um, um, side looking radar? Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, side looking radar? Yeah, it's actually um, seismic, seismic, seismic uh, reverberation uh, waveform. They were able to look under the paws of the Sphinx and they found a chamber there. And they say they haven't got into it yet. That's a whole other story. But anyway. These pyramids were found in Egypt. And these ones are datable to 10,000 years. Check out this picture. This was taken during the Second World War by um, by an American pilot that was lost over China. And he saw this pyramid and he, he took a picture and he brought it back home. He survived the whole thing and brought the picture back home and everybody you know a few years ago when I would present that people would say oh well that one is iffy you know this could be a hoax well okay nobody believed them except that the Chinese government last few years have released these pictures not only is there more there's uh, there's a there's pyramids in Egypt there's hundreds of pyramids in Egypt, uh, in China. And uh, the Chinese government actually got the farmers to farm on top of the pyramids so that they wouldn't be so apparent by satellite. <laughs> and the reason why, so here's the poor farmer that got the job. <laughs> the reason why they were doing that is because they didn't want the Western world to know about these pyramids. Why? Because the legends that come with these pyramids is that the sun gods built them and that the sun gods were blue-eyed, blonde-haired people. As far as the Chinese government went, uh, looked at this, Blonde hair, blue eyed people had to be Europeans. And the last thing they wanted was European people being responsible for some of the most ancient knowledge of the Chinese tradition. So they didn't want those pyramids to be known by the West. They did find the mummies of these blonde hair, blue eyed people in the high desert of China. 
Over 500 mummies were found. All very tall, absolutely not Asian people. And then you go to the forbidden city of China. The city that holds all the knowledge of the universe. All the knowledge of the sun gods. And at the entrance of the city is the Sphinx, the lion, which in both Egypt and Chinese tradition are the guardian of the knowledge. They guard the knowledge under their paws. And when you look closely at the paw, what do you find? 